putting concepts together, our last problem in the notepad, at temperatures near 800 Celsius, steam passes over hot coke. That's a form of carbon obtained from coal. Reacts to form CO and H2. The equation provided is that solid carbon with gaseous water producing carbon monoxide gas and hydrogen gas. This mixture of gases that results is an important industrial fuel called water gas. At the 800 Celsius, the equilibrium constant for this reaction is Kp equal 14.1. I'm noticing it's a Kp value indicating that it must be coming from the expression of pressure. What are the equilibrium partial pressures of water, carbon monoxide, and hydrogen in the equilibrium mixture at this temperature if we start with solid carbon and 0.1 mole of water in a one liter vessel? They're giving me information about solid carbon and the moles per liter of the water. However, Kp is an expression that deals with the partial pressures we need to know the partial pressure of carbon monoxide, CO, times the partial pressure of hydrogen, H2, set over the partial pressure of H2O. Notice how the solid carbon does not play a role in the Kp expression. Pure solids and pure liquids simply drop out. We can use this information to switch using a Pivnert problem from the information provided to find the partial pressure of water and then consider our ice chart. So we'd like to know the partial pressure of H2O from this information. Partial pressure of H2O. The volume of the vessel was given to us as one liter. The number of moles was given to us as 0.1 mole. R is the gas constant, 0 0.0821, and that way our answer will come out to us in atmospheres. And we'll need to know the Kelvin temperature for our problem. Given the Kelvin temperature, 800 plus 273 gives us 3710, 1073 Kelvin units. Pulling out for the partial pressure of water, we will hit NRT divided by V. I am finding 8.81 when I solve for the partial pressure of water, 8.81 atmospheres. Now we are ready to develop our ice chart. I'm going to need more room. You might also consider getting a new sheet of paper to give yourself plenty of room to work the problem. I'm going to recopy the equation it as appears. Solid carbon plus gaseous water in equilibrium with carbon monoxide gas and hydrogen gas. I will begin setting up my ice chart, ICE for ice chart, knowing that we will be using partial pressures since we know the value of Kp provided 14.1. We're being asked to solve for the equilibrium, this bottom row. Solid carbon will not play a role in this expression, knowing that that column will not get filled out. But what we do know is the partial pressure of water, the answer to our Pivnert problem, 8.81 ATMs. The initial concentration in, or pressure units for the products is zero. Let's suppose all of the coefficients are indeed one, so the value of water goes down by a value of x, and the two products get made to the value of x. So water would be at the equilibrium, 8.81 minus x. Carbon monoxide has a value of x, and water has a value of x. We have 8.81 minus x, x, and x, the values of those reactants and products. 
knowing that we can sub that into the KP expression, KP was given to us as 14.1 products over reactant. X times X, I'll write as X squared. And on the bottom, 8.81 minus X. We will distribute 14.1 distributed through 8.81 minus X, set equal to X squared. Let's hit that together, 14.1 times 8.81 shows me a value of 124.221 minus 14.1x minus x squared gives me the value of 0. Working into the quadratic equation, I will flip the signs and rewrite positive x squared plus 14.1x minus 124.221 equal 0. Our A value is 1, B is 14.1, and C is negative 124.221. Let's hit the quadratic program and find the values for X. On our calculator, hitting for program, Selecting your quadratic equation, the value for A is 1, the value for B, 14.1, the value for C, negative 124.221. The two values for X come out to be negative 20.238 or positive 6.138. Knowing that pressure cannot be negative, we are solving as 6.138 for the value of x. When we've decided the value for x, 8.31 or 6.138, we need to go back and just fill in the values as we found them, subbing in for the value of x. 8.81 minus 6.138 gives me the equilibrium pressure for water, 8.81 minus 6.138 equals 2.672 atmospheres of pressure at equilibrium for the water. 6.138 atmospheres, the equilibrium pressure for carbon monoxide, and the same 6.138 atmospheres for the hydrogen gas. The value for X was used to determine the equilibrium row of our ice chart. The next part of our putting it together concept says, what is the minimum amount of carbon required to achieve equilibrium under these conditions? Knowing that the carbon did not play a role when we did our equilibrium expression, it is still part of the overall chemical equation, and there is a certain minimum amount of grams needed to start this reaction. It is not part of KP expression, but it is indeed part of the chemistry. Here's what we know so far from the last problem, that at equilibrium, we had a partial pressure of water as 2.672 atmospheres. Using this information and the stoichiometry, we can figure out the number of moles of water at the equilibrium. If PV equals NRT, let's pull out N, the number of moles of water at the equilibrium. Now the partial pressure we just solved for, 2.672 atmospheres, the volume of our container was given to us as one liter. N will now stand for the number of moles of the water. R is our gas constant, August 21st, and the Kelvin temperature was determined to be 1073 Kelvin units. Pulling out for N the number of moles, we'll hit 2.67, 2.67. <laughs> 2.672 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 1073 Kelvin units. 
the number of moles of water, 0 0.0303 moles of water. Seeing in our equation it is indeed a one-to-one -one stoichiometric ratio, we would need the same number of moles of solid carbon. The moles of water is also equal to the number of moles of solid carbon required at equilibrium. We'll do a little mole map work. If we need 0303 moles of carbon, using the molar mass of 12, 12 grams per mole, I'll go times 3 on the calculator, and we would need 0 0.09, and just round, 0 0.09 grams of carbon at equilibrium to keep this reaction going. On the top of the next page in our notepad, the problem continues. What is the total pressure in the vessel at equilibrium? This is a Dalton's Law application, understanding that the total pressure in this container is the sum of the individual pressures. The partial pressure of water added to the partial pressure of carbon monoxide added to the partial pressure of hydrogen. Simply add those three values together and we will get the total pressure in the container. That simply becomes the bottom row of the ice chart built previously. The total pressure is found by adding 2.672 atmospheres, that partial pressure from the water, to the partial pressure of carbon monoxide, 6.138, and the same value again, 6.138, for the partial pressure of hydrogen. We'll sum the total and find the total pressure inside of this container. 2.672 plus 6.138 gives me a total pressure Oh, and I doubled that. It gives me a total pressure of 14.948 atmospheres inside of this container. The next part of our question asks us, at 25 degrees Celsius, the value of Kp is 1.7 E negative 21. Is this reaction exo or endothermic? Well, here's what we know. Kp of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 21 is a value at 25 degrees Celsius. The Kp we were given originally in our problem was 14.1, much larger, and that was at 500 degrees Celsius. What's happened is as we cooled the reaction down, the K got much smaller. 800 Celsius, thank you, I've just noticed that. 800 Celsius was the original temperature. But again, looking at it being much warmer as compared to it is now. Which direction must it have shifted as we cooled the temperature down? Knowing that as the temperature cooled, the K got smaller, we could realize the equilibrium must be shifting left. And if the equilibrium is shifting left to make more temperature, Again, increasing the desired heat. In an endothermic process, the shifting left causes the K to get smaller, and endothermic values consider heat as a reactant. This particular reaction must be endothermic, simply explained as the reaction cooled from 800 to 25, I noticed the Kp significantly decreased as well. The final consideration for this problem, to produce the maximum amount of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gases at equilibrium, should the pressure of the system be increased or decreased? Let's revisit what we know to be the balanced equation. We have solid carbon plus gaseous water in equilibrium with carbon monoxide and hydrogen both in the gaseous form. On the right side of re our equation, we have two gaseous moles of products. On the left side of the equation, we have one gaseous mole of reactant. If we are manipulating pressure, 
we can force the equilibrium to either increase or decrease. Remember, our target is to make the maximum amount of our products pointing right. If we want to increase the number of gaseous moles heading right, knowing that it has fewer, has more gaseous moles, we want to have low pressure. Under low pressure, we will force the system right to try to produce more pressure. Lowering the pressure would favor the product side of our reaction.